Hi class, this is Dr. O'Connor. In this video, I'm going to talk about radioactive half-life. And half-life is represented by a lowercase t with a subscript of one half. And this is the amount of time that is required for one half of a radioactive sample to decay. Now, half-lives are going to differ greatly with different isotopes. So, you know, some radioisotopes will have a very short half-life, maybe a few hours, and others will have a very long half-life, maybe several thousand years, and then everything else is kind of in between there. So we measure the rate of nuclear decay in units of half-life. Again, a lowercase t with a subscript of one half. Now, the half-life of any particular isotope is going to be the same regardless of the sample size, the temperature, or any other external condition. So for example, if I tell you that radioisotope A has a half-life of two years, then it doesn't matter if I have a gram of sample A or if I have a ton of sample A. The half-life is two years. So within two years, that ton would be down to half a ton. And that gram, if I had a gram of A after one half-life, which is two years, we would have a half a gram of A left. So it doesn't matter. Regardless, again, of the sample size, the half-life will be the same for a particular isotope. Let's go ahead and take a look at iodine 53 and if we have one gram of iodine 53 it turns out that the half-life for iodine 53 is eight days so after one half-life half of the sample will be will remain and that's half a gram after two half-lives okay we have a quarter of a gram after three half-lives we have 0.125 grams. Now, after four half-lives, that would be 0 0.125 divided by 2, and that would give us 0 0.0625 grams remaining after 1, 2, 3, 4 half-lives. And then it can go on and on and on. Now, we can determine the fraction of a sample remaining, whether it's in grams or tons or ounces, and we do that by using this relationship here. 0.5 to the n power will give us the fraction remaining, where n is the number of half-lives. So for example, I let's let's use this iodine 53. So if I start off with one gram of sample or, or a thousand grams or uh, a ton of the sample, it doesn't matter. The half-life will be the same. So after four half-lives, we already uh, did that before, so 0 0.5 to the fourth, that's going to give us 0 0.0625 will be the fraction that remains, okay? And if you want to convert that to a percent, multiply it by 100. So after four half-lives, only 6.25% of your sample remains. So let's take a look at this curve here. Here on the y-axis is the fraction of a sample remaining. And here we have number of half-lives. And this goes for any nuclear decay. All nuclear decays will follow this curve. It doesn't matter if the half-lives are me measured in years, minutes, seconds, days, hours, what have you. It is going to look like this. All right, so we see, for example, here after the first half-life, you're going to have half the sample remaining, 0.5. Um, second half-life, all right, you're going to have 0 0.25 and so on. So all nuclear decay will follow this type of curve. So it makes it very easy then to calculate a half-life. Let's take a look at a problem. 
the half-life of carbon-14 is 5,730 years. In fact, we use this for our archaeological dating, all right? And there's a video on that that either you should have watched or you will be watching soon. But anyway, the half-life of carbon-14 is 5,730 years. So here we're being asked what percentage of carbon-14 remains in a sample that is estimated to be 19,000 years old. Well, we can use this 0.5 to the n power, the number of half-lives, and that'll give us the fraction that remains. And then from that, we can determine the percent. So we need to find the number of half-lives. Well, one half-life is 5,730 years. We just take the 19,000 years divided by 5,730 years, and that'll give us the number of half-lives. So let me see what that works out to be, 5,730. And that's 3.32 half-lives. To find the fraction that remains, I'll go ahead and put this in for n. So we have 0.5 to the 3.32 power. So that's 0.5 to the 3.32. And it gives me 0 0.5. One zero zero for the fraction remaining. Multiply that by a hundred. Ten percent remains after nineteen thousand years. Okay, uh, and that that's a good thing because that's how we're able to date old artifacts and things like that. Okay, here's another problem. We're told that selenium seventy five is a beta emitter, and it has a half life of one hundred and twenty days. It's something that's used for scans of the pancreas, okay? So it's an isotope that we use to scan the pancreas. How long would it take for a 0.05 gram sample to decrease to 0.01 grams? And then in B, how much selenium-75 would remain from a 0.05 gram sample that has been stored for one year? Well, let's do part A first. And we want to know how long it would take for a 0 0.05 gram sample to decrease to 0 0.01 grams. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is, from this information here, I would be able to find out the percentage that would remain. Okay, and all I have to do is take my 0 0.010 grams and divide by the... 0 0.05 grams, multiply by 100, and I get, I get 20%, okay? So the fraction of 20% is 0.2. So I can use this relationship here, 0.5 to the n is equal to the fraction that remains, and that, that would be 0.2. So I need to solve for n. And the way to do that, we have an exponential term here. So what we can do is we can bring that exponent out. So we can bring that in the front here. If we take the log of 0 0.5, and then of course the log of the 0 0.2. Now all I have to do is solve for n. So n would be equal to log of 0.2 over the log of 0.5. And that would be log of 0.2 divided by the log of 0.5. And I get n equal to 2.32. So that's 2.32 half-lives. But we were asked how long. Well, we know that one half-life is 120 days. Yes, 120 days. So we have 2.32 half-lives. And we know that one half-life is 120 days. 
So 120 times 2.32, that'll be 278 days. It would take 278 days for that 0 0.05 gram sample to decrease to 0 0.010. And again, that's only 20%. Okay, so it would take a long time for this particular radioisotope to decay to almost zero. Remember from this graph here, or from the plot I showed you before, it never quite reaches zero. All right. So now we have to do part B. How much selenium 75 would remain from a 0 0.05 gram sample that has been stored for one year? Well, let's see. If it's going to be stored for one year, we know that one half-life is 120 days. One year is 365 days. Let's go ahead and take um, the 365 days. And what was the question again? Oh, how much would remain? So we have 365 days, and we know that 121 days is one half-life. So 365 divided by 120, that would be 3.04 half-lives. So we have the number of half-lives, so now we can find the fraction remaining, and we do that with this, where n is equal to 3.04, so 0.5 to the 3.04 power is going to give us 0 0.122 as our fraction remaining. So now if we just multiply the fraction remaining. Remember, this is the same as 12.2%. So if we want to find out how much remains, we multiply the 0.122 times the original number of grams. And that gives us 0 0.0001. Well, that's it for Half-Life. If you have any questions, please contact me. Otherwise, have a great weekend. Bye-bye.